Hello, Brandon students. Uh, this is Tyler Bray. Um, I'm recording this video currently at Drill, so uh, I apologize for the inform and the drawings of, of all the weapons and stuff. But this is the only room that had a whiteboard, and this is the only real chance I have to kind of fill the uh, um, my, my video or my um, my presentation. So um, I'm going to be doing it kind of kind of at work. So um, what I'm going to be teaching about today is the six unit lesson plan I set forward was for going through the Industrial Revolution. So this lesson that I'm about to teach right now is a is the first unit lesson. Um, and so kind of following that the lesson topic was the class will focus on pre-industrial revolution lifestyles, focusing on agriculture being the main source of labor. And then once we get more into the Industrial Revolution unit, we'll kind of realize this the um, the, uh, the step we took away from it. So, um, lesson objectives are students will read primary sources such as journals and editorials to understand how an agricultural lifestyle may have looked like. Uh, the second one is students will physically draw an image on how the rural lifestyles may have been lived based off of the primary source. Lesson standards are understanding the life of pre-industrial revolution through study of primary sources, and being able to understand how technology affects their own lives currently and what their life may look like without technology. So the purpose of today's lesson is to kind of you know, quickly review what we went over, which is a, uh, a unit on the American uh, and French revolutions, and then uh, kind of looking looking into the forward and trying to like how they end, or how students would live their lives without technology. So, um, what's written in the lesson plan is that generally students would come in, um, complete a journal, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the content. So, without further ado, we'll just have a uh, have uh, things going out. I don't have actual students in here, so I'll be kind of like answering my own questions. So, you know, welcome class. Come on in. Have a seat. Your uh, journal's up on board. I'll give you guys uh, a minute or two to respond to it. And then response made. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you all know, last week we finished our French Revolution unit. So, as you all know, we are going into our Industrial Revolution unit. All right, all these, you know, we're going into all these revolutions. It's just revolutionary. So with that, who can remind or who can tell me what essentially what we talked about for the past couple weeks? Yes, we talked about the American Revolution. Now, what did the American Revolution lead to? Jimmy? Ah, yes, the French Revolution. And... Ladies and gentlemen, what did the French Revolution lead to? Yeah, that's right. With freedom, essentially, people are no longer under the rule of a king. People are now under the rule of a government that is represented by people. Or now, well, you know, they were always ruled by people, but they're represented by you know generally peers, um, not. Specifically, royalty and people who are considered to really like to find right. Uh, with this, people are uh, rules are more relaxed for people to try new things, to invent new things, and with that, we kind of move forward into something called the industrial revolution. So, for those of you who can remember back to week one, what was everyone's what? Um, what started? You know, our march to modernity. Yes, Jason, it was agriculture, all right? So at this time, after the French Revolution, everyone is still essentially a farmer. So we discussed in the first week where agriculture came along and it freed people up to do more things instead of just solely focus on food production. However, a large portion of the population still had to focus on food production. So uh, as you can see this pie chart here, all of this during the French Revolution, this side, this you know, I'm gonna say like 97% of the pie chart is people engaged in work in agriculture. While you have out here, you have people working in, you know, politics, arts, science. You don't really have much, um, you know, much uh, room to do anything else. So job specialization happens after the agricultural revolution, but it's still, you know, everyone's still focused on becoming a farmer. Uh, what we'll talk about later in the Industrial Revolution is, you know, you people take a step away from farming. New technologies are invented. Again, we talked about people people being able to 
sorry, people being able to uh, um, focus on other jobs that wasn't agriculture. And so then you kind of get a pie chart looking like this. More people are getting into the science, more people are inventing things. And essentially, sorry. My computer's freaking out. There we go. And so essentially, you have a bigger pie chart while less people are working on um, agriculture. So, what do you think came from the Industrial Revolution? Yes, Becky, the industry came from the Industrial Revolution. Remember how we talked about steam and coal? All right, from those sources, you got electricity. So, what I'm going to ask you guys now to do is, you guys are going to write a, you know, you know how your lives go in daily life. I'm going to ask you to write, you know, page long, like, story, story, uh, a story of, you know, what happens in your daily life. However, you must exclude all of technology. What we're going to be doing for this week is we're going to be focus focusing on the lifestyles before the Industrial Revolution. So once we look through the Industrial Revolution, we can figure out what changed. So, what I'm going to have you guys do is take out a pencil and paper, and you guys are going to be writing, you know, a journal, a diary, a story of, you know, your daily life from the time you wake up, from the time you go to bed. However, you cannot have electricity. You can't wake up and use your phone. You know, the roosters have to wake you up, not your phone, and any of that stuff. So, without any questions, you may begin your assignment. So, that, uh, that ends this portion of the video. Um, sorry, it's kind of scratchy and quickly shifted together. Uh, didn't have too much time. So, thank you, uh, and this is my video.